I'm Xavier Scruggs, and this is The Check-In. Everyone knows this season is different, but we need to hear it straight from the players' mouths. Every player has a story worth telling in this game, and that story can change someone else's lives for the better. I want to sit down and figure out how this season is not only affecting them and their teammates, but also how it's affecting their families and loved ones. The fans and followers of baseball deserve a true inside look. I just want to be the one to bring it to them. With my experience, my passion for the game, and my relationships with the players, I feel like I can bring this thing to life more than the average reporter or writer. This is so much bigger than baseball. I'm X, and this is The Check-In. Today we have Randall Grichuk, outfielder for the Toronto Blue Jays. A good close friend of mine and somebody that I played with for a long time in the Cardinals organization. Randall, welcome to the check-in. Hey, thanks for having me, man. Happy to be here. Randall, take me back first and foremost to spring training. You start hearing a little bit of rumors about there's going to be a stoppage in the middle of spring training. What are your thoughts during that time? Funny you say that. So I was on the training room table getting treatment and uh, we saw kind of NBA, NHL kind of start talking about that. And it was like, nah, we're not going to stop. Like, that will be good. Like, this is going to pass. It will be taken care of. And then it was like a week later. It was the day before we stopped. And it was like, this might actually happen. And then sure enough, the next day it was put, put on hold. Uh, obviously something that nobody wants to see. We were playing well. We thought we were going to have a good chance to um, exceed expectations. And, uh, and then we were all sent home. Tell me now, did you go straight home or did you stay at the facility and keep working out a little bit? What were your steps right after that? Yeah, so initially they said it was going to be two weeks. So I'm like, two weeks, I'll just stay in Clearwater, go to the field, train, you know, stay ready. And then um, I stayed for about a week longer and they were like, hey, I would go home. Mm -hmm. And the way they said it was like, this ain't going to start anytime soon. And um, things were getting worse and worse. And I just figured, hey, if I'm going to get stuck somewhere, I'd rather be stuck at home, um, you know. So we ended up going back to Arizona and, uh, you know, making a smart call of getting out of the Airbnb. And we were up in a, in a week anyway, so we we're going to have to find somewhere else anyway. So we just went home. Now, take me into May. You're starting to hear, OK, there may not be a season. Yeah. Um, the rumors are flying around like that. What was your mentality during that time? Yeah, that was that was crazy because I think we knew we were going to play. We really thought we were going to play. It was just a matter of time. And then Manfred comes out and says, you know, there might not be a season. Mm -hmm. um, it was it, it was crushing. You know, uh, I love this game and I've never not been able to play. Right. You know, you go through the grind and there are days where you're like, man, this is tough. This is a long season. I wish I was at home. And then you're at home and you're like, wow, like I would be taking that grind and my body being beat up than just sitting at home. So it was tough. And then uh, luckily later they came out and said, let's play. Right. We get into June. They start talking about, OK, there's going to be an opening day. Um, what are the thoughts at that time? Because obviously you had a you received a nice contract the year before. You could have opted out. Some guys opted out this season. Did you did that cross your mind at all? No, not at all. I mean, obviously, I know the virus is real, um, but I knew we were going to take, um, you know, precautions to stay safe. And I wanted to play. I wanted to play. I wanted to get out there and play. This spring training was a kind of a game changer for me. And I wanted to get out there and, and put it to work in, in meaningful games and, and see if what I was feeling matched up with how I was playing. Now, I'm interested to know, too, not only how it's affected you going into this season, but maybe how it's affected your fiance, Victoria, maybe your family, because there's protocols that haven't been the same as the year before. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, Victoria has been able to come out, thankfully, but my parents, they're not going to be able to come out. You know, they've talked about coming out and, 
just trying to see a game from a parking garage or something from the distance. And, and I told him, hey, it's not worth the, the risk of traveling. And um, the chances are you're probably not going to be able to catch the game anyway. Games are blacked out in the city you're playing in. So I was like, you're not going to be able to watch it on TV at the hotel. So um, just stay safe, be at home, let it pass. And, and you know, hopefully next year returns back to normal. And that's got to be tough for them, too, because they're always coming out to see you play and they love watching you. Yeah, it hurts my dad. They had like eight trips planned this year and now it turns out to be zero. Um, they came out to spring training and got to see like one game. And so not their year for baseball, but they're watching every game from home and, and they're enjoying it. Just wishing they could be here, though. Now we get into the season's about to start. The Blue Jays find out that they can't play their home games in Toronto. <laughs> What's the thoughts in the clubhouse? What's everybody kind of thinking is going to happen at that point? Dude, it was crazy. So we're at home and they're saying we're supposed to report in three days and we don't know where we're reporting. It's like rewind a couple of days. It's a week and they're like, hey, we're, we're, we're report day. We've come to an agreement. We don't know where we're going. It gets to three days. We still don't know. They finally say we're going to Toronto and we're like, well, have we got clear? And they're like, no. We're like, then why are we going to Toronto? So we end up going to Tampa, getting cleared and then going to Toronto and still with not with not knowing if we're going to be able to play the season there. So we're literally going there to train, get ready for a season with not knowing where we're going to play the season at. Wow. And then you end up having to play the games in Buffalo. Um, before I get to Buffalo, you played two home games in DC. Yeah. What was it like being the home team in a different city? Super weird. I mean, wearing the white jerseys, seeing our pump up videos on the Jumbotron, <laughs> our walk up songs. It was just something that obviously it just felt weird. It just not normal, you know? Right. And then that, talking about not normal, no fans in the stands. How has that been as a transition for you? Um, is it, are you somebody that feeds off the fan energy? Yeah, most definitely. I think it's so, so much easier to, um, you know, look up in the crowd and just feel them cheering, you know, when you're coming up in a big situation and they're on their feet and, and you're, you know, getting that mode where you can't kind of feel your body and you're just like, you know, there ain't that, that that's not going on. You know, it's, right. it's, you got to pump yourself up. You got to find the adrenaline um, within deep down of just understanding these are meaningful games. This is your career. Um, it's a big league game and you got to win a big league game tonight. So it's definitely a lot different. Do I think it would be easy for young guys to come up this year? I definitely do. <laughs> no crowd, no heckling, uh, you know, going into New York on a night game is, is that fun. can't be easy. Right? It's not, it's not the, <laughs> They uh, yell some pretty interesting things oh, at you. I can't even imagine. Well, actually, I can because I've been there. So <laughs> actually, tell me a little bit about now playing in Buffalo. Have you enjoyed your time there? Yeah, Buffalo's been good. It's, um, you know, they've they worked really hard. They had about 10 days. They resurfaced the field. They uh, pretty much renovated the whole underground of the stadium, um, took away our batting cages, made a huge locker room that's socially distanced. Uh, put the cages on the um, concourse, two nice cages, put our weight room up there. So they did, a, they did a really good job with the amount of time they had. That's awesome to hear. A couple last questions for you. Trevor Bauer, he has his own personal vlog in the COVID-19 season, bringing the camera in the clubhouse, outside the clubhouse, on the field. I'm interested to know what are your thoughts on that? I love it. You know, I think Major League Baseball doesn't do a good enough job of um, advertising the players, uh, promoting the game and the players. So anytime you can get footage out there, raw footage, real footage of players. And um, I think it's it's just going to help help the player uh, promote himself and, and, and Major League Baseball. So I'm all for it. I think it's awesome. I, I tune in and check them out. Uh, I get a kick out of them. Yeah, I think it's good for the player to, you know, market themselves, brand themselves and, and give the fans an inside look as well. Exactly. Um, you've personally done amazing this season. You've started off very hot, uh, hoping that continues. But has there been a change in your mentality with, during this season? Um, obviously, it's a different season, but I'm interested to know physically, mentally, has there been any big changes? You know, offensively at the plate, there's been a lot of changes. You know, I've, I've been able to work with our hitting coach, Guillermo, and Dante Bichette about um, just mental approach and the cues you tell yourself in the box. And that's been able to slow the game down a lot for me. Um, you know, it's crazy because it's a six game season. So every game matters. Every game's roughly 
two and a half games or three games. So right. if you win a series, that's like winning three series. So, um, you know, we understand that and we're going out there and giving it our all, leaving it all on the field and we're having fun out there. Yeah, that can, you can definitely see that. Now, lastly, obviously you guys want to win a championship. That's the ultimate goal. What would you like to take most away from this most interesting, crazy each season? Yeah, I mean, I think it, it you know, there's going to be asterisks on everything this year, I think. But um, the one thing is the World Series, every team's going to have to go through the same journey in the aspect of winning their division, making it to the playoffs if they're a wild card team um, or the second place and, and winning a World Series. So I don't think that there should necessarily be an asterisk on the World Series. I get it's going to be a funky year, but whoever wins it had to had to win it. And, um, you know, I think we have a really good opportunity to win it. And, uh, you know, day in and day out, we keep telling ourselves um, we're a playoff caliber team and, and, and we're out there showing it. So uh, I think um, it's going to be a fun, fun, fun game down the stretch. Yeah, you guys are, seem to be so against the odds. But at the same time, you guys have really made it a special season so yeah. far for yourselves. It's, it's fun to see. Our young guys have come up and done really well. You know, they've almost taking it like they're going to 4A. They're not, they're not going to the big leagues. You know, the bright lights hasn't shied away from. And, right. Um, it's been impressive to watch, and I think we've definitely turned the corner a lot quicker than people thought. Definitely. Well, I appreciate you giving the fans an inside look as to what's going on this season for you, your family, the team. Um, just wishing the best for you this season and keep doing what you do, man. I appreciate it, man. Thank you.